my name is Joanna Salinas. I'm the outreach coordinator with the Waukesha County Green Team. And um, I want to give you a quick disclaimer here. I am not a dietitian. So anytime we're changing our diet, starting a new exercise routine, um, any of that, you really want to consult a medical professional. So please know that I am not a dietitian, and while I've worked with dietitians for years, it's always good to get some sound medical advice. And also, this is a presentation, I'm going to say for beginners with practical steps. So if you are already a vegan or you're way down that road and you are looking for really particular specific things, this may not be the presentation for you. But um, if that's something you're interested in, we could go down that road later. This really is designed to be a presentation for people who are interested in making a change and some really practical tips and tricks for that. All right, so this is a picture of my family. Um, if you can see my cursor, uh, these are my two boys over here. This is Benjamin and Sam. Um, these are my two girls. This is Izzy and Ella. And we, uh, myself and the kids, have been in a variety of different stages of eating a plant-based diet for years. And this right here is my husband in the middle. He is definitely a meat eater, but he is very happy as long as there's food in the house. So he's been um, really good about kind of going along with whatever it is that we're eating. So, and here's another um, picture of them. So this is Sam here on the end. When Sam was two years old, uh, he was diagnosed with type one diabetes. And the reason I bring this up is because um, it's been really interesting to watch him. So as you know, may know with diabetes, you have to match um, insulin levels with whatever food you're eating. So as we were going through this process with him as he was growing, uh, one of the really interesting things we found is that Sam's body could not digest meat well. So every time he ate um, a really meat heavy meal, his body would just stop digesting any food. So we would have given him insulin for that food, his blood sugars would crash, and then late at night, he would go to sleep and it was as if as soon as his body relaxed, it was able to digest all that food during the day that had stopped, and then his blood sugars would spike. So Sam is a very, um, kind of intuitive, caring uh, kid. And as he hit elementary school, he became very concerned um, himself for personal reasons about eating meat. So Sam decided himself that he would like to become a vegetarian. And that kind of started our journey into this. So, um, so this is him as a little kid when he decided we, because he was a diabetic, the really nice thing is we got to meet with a dietitian every three months just to help manage his diabetes. So they really helped us kind of transition into this vegetarian lifestyle and help. And really every three months we went in there and we just got continual advice and kind of evaluation of our meals. And um, so then here he was from that to this healthy young man. And so all four of my kids have in some part really adopted a plant-based lifestyle style. So my older son is a vegan. My daughter is a pescatarian. I have two kids who are lactose intolerant. So then we had to cut a lot of dairy out. My philosophy as a parent raising kids with lots of different things is I always cooked our main meal of the day for the most restrictive diet. So I knew, um, and that was when my son was home and was a vegan, I cooked all main meals for him, for the whole family, but based around his diet. So I knew that once a day he was getting a really complete, super healthy meal that I could give him. And he was a college student, so he was in and out. 
And so we really um, have done a lot of educating of ourselves and uh, we're excited about, about our choices. So what is a plant-based diet? Well, a plant-based diet is any eating pattern which is focused on food primarily from plants. That does not necessarily mean that you're a vegetarian or a vegan or you never eat meat or dairy. It simply means that um, you're proportionately choosing most of your food from plant sources. So plant sources are not only fruits and vegetables, but they're also nuts, seeds, oils, whole grains, legumes and beans. So all those types of things. So some different varieties of being plant-based. It comes in lots of different shapes and sizes. So you could be what you might call yourself as a semi-vegetarian, which might eat eggs, dairy, and occasional meat. Uh, people might call themselves a pescatarian, which means that you're not eating red meat or chicken, um, but you're eating eggs, dairy, fish, and seafood. Um, vegetarians eat eggs and dairy, but typically not any other fish, seafood, or meat. And then a vegan eats no animal products. So I'm here to tell you that um, wherever you are on this scale is 100% okay. That, um, that everybody has very specific, specific reasons for wanting to increase um, uh, a plant-based diet. Oh, we got some more people coming in here. Um, and that's totally okay. I think a lot of downfalls is lots of us have sort of ideas that it's all or nothing. And I really um, think that that's how a lot of us fail. So if we say all or nothing, um, you know, we're kind of setting ourselves up for there's going to be a time when we can't. And um, instead, it's all about progress, not perfection. So why plant-based? There's kind of three main reasons and all of us fall in somewhere in those. One reason people choose to go plant-based is for ethical reasons. It might be because of inhumane farming practices or attributing to animal death. That, um, so it's a really personal ethical reason why they do. Um, for some people, it's environmental. That's why actually why I eat a plant-based diet. Um, the livestock industry um, really contributes to very significant pollution and water use. So if we take a cow, for instance, one glass of milk, so one eight ounce glass of milk, it needs 33 gallons of water simply in the production of that one glass of milk. Or a quarter pound beef patty takes over 600 gallons of water in, for the production of that and life cycle. So there's really some very significant environmental reasons to reduce your animal consumption. And the livestock industry produces about 14% of all greenhouse gas emissions as well. So there's that. And then the other reason is health. Health really should be a main driving reason for all of us. So we know a plant-based diet reduces the risks for multiple diseases, including heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, and it also increases life expectancy. So there's lots of health reasons why we want to uh, shift to a plant-based diet. The rest of the presentation is really going to be like practical tips for how to do this. I want to say that this is probably the most important thing if you're just starting out, is to start slow. It's really along that idea of it's progress, not per perfection. So 
So really start slow on this process. So I want all of you to think about the meals that you are already cooking. And there's probably a whole lot of meals that you already cook that are plant-based or could really easily become plant-based. So I started listing just a whole lot of common um, meatless meals. So pasta dishes, and this is meatless, not necessarily dairy or egg-free, but just meatless to start with. So spaghetti, pastas, lasagnas, all sorts of potato dishes, um, soups, so many soups that can be made without meat. Um, and then if we think about a lot of um, international food from around the world, a lot of those are um, based um, in vegetarian meals. So Chinese food, Mexican food, um, Indian food, Middle Eastern food, a lot of that food is already has so many incredible, delicious vegetarian options in there. Um, pizzas, how many pizzas can we make without meat? Um, and then salads, I have to tell you, I really will not talk much about salads because um, the worst thing ever is being served a salad everywhere you go as your option for being uh, meatless because there's so many incredible food dishes out there bean-based meals. I have to tell you my kids' absolute favorite meals are meals that are based with lentils, which you wouldn't really think that kids like, but boy, they really love them a lot. Um, sandwiches, breakfast foods. Most breakfast foods can very easily be made without meat. So, so there's already a ton of common meatless meals. So when um, you sit down after this and you think about, well, what meals do I have? I would suggest to everybody that you kind of write down the things that you usually typically cook in a week and put a star by the ones that already don't have meat. And then the rest of this presentation is simple swaps that you can make in order to make something more plant-based. Um, and so then you can think about how you can shift the food that you're already making and make it more plant-based. All right, so one of the things we can do is simply tweak those meals that we are already making. All right, and one of the ways to do that is to think about meat as a condiment or a side dish instead of the main course. So how many of us grew up kind of with the meat and potatoes type of idea for a typical dinner? But if we sort of shift our mindset a little bit and start thinking instead about meat as a condiment, what if meat was something you sprinkled on top of your food or an additive of your food instead of the main course? And if that's a very first shift, that was our first shift in doing this, was how simply to reduce the amount of meat. So then you might have a potato dish where maybe something is sprinkled on top. And then you get to the point where you say, I don't even need that bacon or ham sprinkled on top. I can start making it more of a pure plant-based meal. So that's one very easy way to, I say easy, it may not be easy for certain people of your house, but in houses where one person is plant-based, but the other person in the home is still eating meat, that is a way um, that you can cook for both people and drastically reduce the amount of meat that you're eating in your house. So if you make a dish like this potato dish, you know, and have just a little bit of meat as, as a condiment for the person who's still eating meat, um, suddenly, you know, there's, you're buying just a tiny little bit instead of, you know, having all of that in your shopping cart at the store. Okay, so then these, what I'm going to go through are very simple swaps for ingredients that are in typical meals. Um, so the first one is butter. 
So there are a ton, a ton of, I, I don't know if any of you can see me, um, of vegetarian and um, vegan options for butter in the store now. I went into Pick and Save yesterday and um, they have a whole aisle, the whole top shelf is all full. So here are some um, that can easily be used. If you see right here, you can see them labeled. So lots of times um, you will see this little V symbol on a container, like what's on the, it's vegan. There's a, this little V symbol that um, is a symbol that it's certified vegan and you know there's no animal products in that at all. Or it'll simply say vegan on it. So uh, butter is a very easy swap to get a vegan butter base instead. Um, and then there are some that are, so if you think about what you typically would use um, that's animal based, there's um, some that's used that you can use for spreading like on toast or bread. And there's some that's really great for baking. So both of those are available as alternatives. So any recipe you have that might call for butter, you can use uh, one of these alternatives instead. So another very simple swap that um, is simply to swap vegetable broth in place of any beef or chicken in any recipe. So there's some really, really great tasting vegetable broths out there um, that give a lot of flavor and they're um, indis indistinguishable in your recipes. In soup recipes, pastas, rices, simply using a vegetable broth instead of um, an animal-based one is a very simple swap. They also sell, and some of these are very easy to find in stores and some of them are a little harder. They also sell vegetable bouillon cubes. So if you have a recipe that calls for bouillon using a vegetarian vegetable bouillon, well, that is a very easy swap. Um, this is one, uh, I'm sure you've all seen the incredible amount of plant-based milks out there. So we, with uh, having a couple kids with lactose intolerance, we have tried <clears throat> just about all of these different plant-based milks. So uh, the one thing I would caution you all on if you're looking at a plant-based milk is to read the label. So we know that we drink milk and we use milk in recipes um, because we're getting protein from that milk. If we're thinking about traditional cow milk, we're getting protein from that and we're getting calcium from that and also vitamin B12. Um, so those are the three th things that cow's milk really gives to us. So it's important to read labels because some of these um, alternative plant-based milks have no protein in them. So if you're drinking um, almond milk, you might think, oh, it's a nut milk. There's a lot of protein in there and there's virtually no protein in almond milk. So it's important to read the labels and kind of make that decision for yourself. Um, Soy-based milk is, and also pea protein milk are probably the closest to um, traditional dairy that uh, we can see in terms of protein and B12 and also calcium. So all of these usually are fortified with calcium, but it's really important to read those labels to find out for yourself and, and make sure that what you're drinking is good. So I, I, I'm not gonna really go into the health aspects of soy products, except to say that it's um, recommended that you don't have too much soy, like too much soy can also cause problems. And a lot of the plant-based alternatives that are out there for like processed food is all soy-based. So you wanna be careful how much soy you're having. So this will all be available for after um, this presentation for you to look at if, but reading labels is really important.
And then the other thing with plant-based milk is if you are moving towards a plant-based diet for environmental reasons, um, some of these plant-based alternatives have really heavy environmental footprints. So almond milk in particular is extremely water intensive and the processing of the almond milk um, uh, is very water intensive as well. The two at the bottom, uh, pea, pea protein milk is not on here, but it's pretty equivalent to soy milk. So soy milk and oat milk have the lowest footprint, environmental footprint, if that is a reason why you're going plant-based. I say it's always important to look at the environmental footprint of all of these. And then there's also, when you're buying these plant-based um, milk products, a lot of them are sweetened. So if you are moving to a plant-based product for health reasons, you should also look at all the added uh, sugar that might be added to those products. So I found that we use different milks for different things. We love oat milk um, for baking and for um, like in our coffee and things. My kids really love pea protein milk and smoothies and in cereal. So it's just kind of about taste too. And to see, kind of play around with them, try different things. So. All right. Uh, so another swap are for eggs. So in my family, aside from my son, who's the vegan, we eat eggs because we have chickens. So, and I have very happy chickens. We feel really good about those chickens. So we happily eat their eggs. But if you are cutting eggs out for any reason from, their from your diet, there are lots of substitutes that you can use. And the substitute you use might depend on why you're using the egg or what you're using the egg in. Um, so here are just a few alternatives. Um, if you're baking, so there's kind of two reasons to use eggs. We use eggs as a binding to bind recipes together, but we also use eggs as a leavening, leavening rising, um, kind of to give some fluff to our um, recipes as well. So if you are simply using eggs for moisture and to bind your recipes together, like in baking, lots of times you can use um, bananas, peanut butter, applesauce, those can all go in place of eggs. If you are using the eggs for different things, like say you wanna make a meringue, the liquid from garbanzo beans actually can be whipped like a meringue and you can use it just like a meringue. Um, and I was shocked the first time I learned that, I had no idea. So instead of dumping out that liquid from your garbanzo beans, you can actually whip it and use it like an egg substitute. Um, flax seed you can use. Um, so I use flax seed in our pancakes all the time. Mix a tablespoon of flax seed with three tablespoons of water and you let it sit for a while and it turns into like a gelatinous substance just like an egg that binds everything together. You can use chia seeds in the same way. Um, with the same ratio of like one tablespoon to three tablespoons of water and let it sit for about 10 to 20 minutes and it turns into that gelatinous mixture and you can use that also as an egg substitute. They also sell egg replacers that you can use for baking. So if you're a baker um, and you don't want the flavor of a banana or applesauce or peanut butter in your things, you can use this egg replacer. It's usually a, like a potato starch or an arrowroot starch. Um, sometimes it's tapioca. So if you have um, 
you know, a, a sensitivity to tapioca, just read the ingredients really well. But they sell this right in the baking aisle now. I've seen all over. I saw it at Pick and Save the other day at Woodman's. Um, and there's no egg in there. It's vegan product and you can use that. Right. So I am not going to be helpful at all to you when we talk about cheese and other dairy products, um, kind of eliminating those from your diet. So there are a ton, a ton of um, vegan cheese products that you can buy now in most grocery stores. So Walmart sells it, um, Woodman's has a huge case of them, uh, Pick and Save has a few of them, um, health food stores, Good Harvest Market does. I have to tell you that I am not a fan of vegan cheese. And <clears throat> this is a tip I have later on, but there are some things that you can easily substitute and other things that to me are harder. And because it's called cheddar cheese, provolone cheese, <clears throat> I have the expectation it's gonna taste like that. And if it tastes different, um, I don't know. It's just a personal choice thing, I think. Uh, my vegan son loves them. One thing that I have found is, you if any of you have ever made your own yogurt at home, you can make your own yogurt from all of these um, alternative milks, the plant-based milk. And they do sell plant-based like um, coconut milk yogurt and all of those things. I have made coconut milk yogurt at home. It's so simple. I will send out the recipe at the end of this. It's literally a can of coconut milk, like a full fat coconut milk. And you put probiotics in it and you let it sit on your counter for two days and you have delicious coconut yogurt. I have found that plain coconut yogurt is a really, really great substitute for sour cream. Um, so if you want that kind of tangy sour cream, same consistency, plain coconut milk is a really, really good um, alternative. Lots of alternatives that call, or lots of recipes that call for like a cheese sauce that are vegan are based in cashews um, and those are really delicious I have found. So if you find a recipe that calls for cashew cheese, I would say give it a try. It uses a lot of cashews, um, but it's, it gives it a really um, cheesy type of consistency. The other product, I don't have it on the side, and I don't know how well you can see this, but at the end I'll hold it up better is, other recipes call for nutritional yeast and nutritional yeast will also give a recipe, um, like if you're making a cheese sauce or a creamy sauce, it'll give it a cheesy flavor. And if you're a vegan, one of the things that you're concerned about getting is B12 and nutritional yeast is an excellent source of the vitamin B12. So. All right, so this was my tip. Anytime, especially if you have kids or you're making stuff for your grandkids. So if you're making a, a plant-based version of a really loved recipe, call it something new. Like instead of calling this mac and cheese when your kids are used to like a craft mac and cheese box, call it instead creamy pasta bake or cashew pasta, because then in, in our, it just tricks our mind into thinking it's a new food. And instead of rejecting it, because we think it should taste like something else, instead we're trying it for the first time um, and really giving it a chance. So that's what I was trying to say about the cheese products is, eating a cheese substitute, but my brain is thinking, waiting for cheddar cheese, I, I struggle with that. But if I called it something different, then maybe my brain wouldn't. So, so this is my trick for kids. 
All right. And lastly, this is where I'm saying I am not a dietitian, so we should always talk to a dietitian about this. But I wanted to go over a little bit of when we're moving to a plant based diet, um, the one thing that people are most concerned about is how much protein do I need every day and am I getting enough protein? So this was the thing that I talked with the dietitians about every time we went in there. And this was their concern. Their one concern is make sure you're getting enough protein. But um, there, is a, an, um, there is a formula for determining how much protein the average person needs. And that is this, the average person needs um, an eighth of a gram for every kilogram of weight. So this, I, and I realize we're used to dealing in pounds. So this 70 kilogram person, that translates to about a 150 pound person. So if you are about around 150 pound, pounds, excuse me, you should get about 56 grams, grams of protein a day. So that's kind of, and then if you're a really active exerciser, then you need to up that a little bit. Um, but you want to aim for about that amount. Um, and then I have a slide here for kids too. So for kids, the, this is it. So one to three years needs about 13 grams of protein a day. Four to eight-year-olds need about 19. And then up to 13 needs 34. Above 13 years old, so 14 and older, we treat them as an adult with that same formula that we used, um, that 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of weight. My suggestion to everyone as you're moving to a plant-based diet is to take a couple days and just do this randomly every once in a while that you might be concerned you're not getting enough protein and write down how much protein you're getting from each meal that you're eating because there's protein in regular things that we're eating. So six whole grain crackers has three grams of protein. So it all adds up. Um, vegetables have protein, any whole wheat, grain, pasta, bread, anything has protein in it. This is regular milk here clearly, but those plant alternatives when you know like soy milk and the pea protein milk all also have eight grams of protein in it. Um, that's why you wanna read those labels and check those things. And then uh, there are a ton of plant-based protein um, sources that are very high in protein. And uh, there's a really nice article that I will send out to all of you from Medical News Today that kind of goes over some of these protein things and how much is in each one of these. But nuts and beans and legumes all have a lot of protein in them. And really, you're probably getting more protein than you need if you're eating the typical American diet. Quinoa um, over here, if you can see my cursor right here, is a really great grain that is also protein. So one of the things the dietitian talked to us about was getting what they call a complete protein. So a complete protein is um, simply a protein that has all of the amino acids all together. So animal protein all are complete proteins. An egg is a complete protein. But when you're eating a plant-based protein, there are not as many. Tofu is a complete protein. Quinoa is a complete protein. If you're eating any other protein that's not a complete protein, you typically, they used to say that you needed to pair certain foods together. Like beans and rice, if you eat them together, are a complete protein. 
But what dietitians are saying now is that it's really not as important to pair them all together on the same plate as it is to just eat a balanced diet throughout the day. So if you eat an incomplete protein for breakfast, but you eat something that might match it for lunch, it turns into a complete protein. I, that's getting into really fine details. And I would say if you're concerned about your protein intake, that's where um, talking with a dietitian would be helpful to just make sure you're getting all the nutrients you need. All right, and then as you're at the store, here's a couple things that are very helpful. Um, this symbol right here, which is the vegan symbol, simply will tell you that it's been certified that there are no animal products at all in that, in that product. So you know that it is a plant-based product. Um, so that's a good label to know. And then, um, so one other thing that I don't have in here, so that my, it's really important to my kids is they also try to avoid gelatin. So gelatin is an animal product that most of us don't realize is an animal product. And so gelatin is in anything that's kind of gummy. So um, like for my kids, it's in fruit snacks because my son who's a diabetic eats fruit snacks and his blood sugar's low. So we always have to buy them without um, gelatin. Gelatin's also in a lot of gummy vitamins. So you can buy vitamins that are labeled vegan. All right, so I'm gonna um, stop sharing so I can see the chat and just see if there are any questions out there. Said, which are best for the environment and water consumption? So I may have answered this as we were going through. So it's the soy milk and the um, pea protein milk are really the best for water consumption. If you're avoiding soy because you don't want that much soy in your diet, the pea protein milk is really good. So how good do the butter alternatives taste? So butter, butter to me, the butter alternatives taste like the spreadable ones taste exactly like a margarine would. Um, so if you really like the taste of, I can't believe it's not butter and margarine, they taste identical. The baking, I use this, um, this country crock plant butter. It's an olive oil base for baking and it's okay. I am not a good baker anyway, so I don't know if my baking is bad because I'm not good at it or because of the plant-based butter. So if any of you are really good bakers, I would love to know your experiences with these different ones. Um, the reviews online for this um, plant-based butter for the country crock for baking are really good. So Oh, yeast stuff in a carton. Okay, so this is nutritional yeast. It's different than yeast for baking. So nutritional yeast, can you guys see that okay? Um, uh, stays good. It's in, it just stays in my cabinet. It is inactive dry yeast. So that's the difference. So yeast you use for baking is active. This is inactive. And because it is a bacterial, it was a bacterial product, it does provide you with a good source of B12. Um, and it tastes cheesy when you use it in recipes. So uh, this was the one thing that the dietitian told me to use regularly for my son who was a vegan. So if you cut out all animal products, the things you need to be concerned about are B12 and iron. Those were the two that the doctor was very concerned about. There's also a vitamin K um, that the doctor was concerned about, but she said that that was, wasn't as likely for my son, at least who's a teenager, to be deficient in. Um, so this is a good source of B12. All right. Oh, yeah, pea milk is in the refrigerator section. Let me see if it's called ripple milk. It's a little thicker than other um, protein milks. 
They have a chocolate one, which my kids really, really like. So, but Ripple is what that's called. All right, can I recommend a good cookbook that would include ratios for egg replacement? Not necessarily a cookbook. I can recommend a really, really good site. Um, so there is a site that we love all of the recipes called Cookie and Kate. And she has tremendous recipes that are plant-based. And then, and she always um, has incredible descriptions of if you're like how to replace things. So um, if you're going plant-based, all of those re recipes have been really, really good. Um, and then there are a couple on there that are my kids' absolute favorite. There's a lentil soup on there that is probably um, their very favorite recipe in the world. It's like, it's a tomato-based lentil soup, um, but whenever we take it out, people are always asking me for the recipe. It's really good. Um, and then there's a couple other sites that um, Minimalist Baker, she has a lot of vegan meals on there. Um, that are really good. And I'll send, I'll send out my favorite sites. I just don't use cookbooks anymore. Sorry. The question was, does Consumer Reports um, health review vegan products? And I have to say they might, but I don't know because I don't get Consumer Reports. So if somebody else has seen one and it's available to share, I'm more than happy to share with everybody. All right, so if you are avoiding gelatin, um, there's a couple of, so vitamins, I, I am concerned about my kids' calcium consumption. So I do have a calcium vitamin, that gummy that they take. And you can buy, um, and I go on, I, 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 I like Amazon just for product information because it's all readily available in comparisons. Um, it's labeled right on here, vegetarian, so there's no gelatin in these. Um, and then if you guys are taking a vitamin D right now, um, which a lot of us are for COVID recommendations, this is a plant-based vitamin D and it has this vitamin K in it that the dietitian recommends. If you have a plant-based diet, I found that on Amazon and there's no gelatin in that. There's a lot of gelatin in medical supplies I've discovered. Um, and then there's a ton in the grocery stores. The really nice thing is that there's a lot of vegetarian options. So like this, if you look at salad dressing, a lot of them and different products simply have this vegan label on it right on the front of things. The problem is with, um, you know, reading labels is that they're so tiny. I feel like sometimes I'm taking a picture of labels with my phone and blowing it up at the store because I can't see them. So it's really nice that things are being labeled now um, vegan or vegetarian. So you know that they're plant-based. All right, well with that, I hope you all have a really good night then.